multiply x plus 3 times the quantity x plus 3. We can also see this as x plus 3 quantity squared. And so then that follows that special product form of x plus y quantity squared. And this x and this y in this, in this special uh, product, this form, formula if you want to say it, is these are just placeholders. So, so this x in the actual problem would be, is representing this x. And this 3 is representing this y. So we could have uh, anything here. We could have 4a to the third instead of x. And, and instead of the y, we can have um, 15 or, or 15z to the fifth. It doesn't matter. Everything follows the pattern just the same. You just kind of plug in, and it's going to get give you x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And so we could do that here. Um, you can also just FOIL this, this x plus 3 times the quantity x plus 3. I'm going to go through and just follow the pattern, just uh, presumably you are familiar with FOILing enough. So let's just follow this pattern so, so we're familiar with that. So in this case, the, the y is the, the 3. So I'm going to, instead of write, instead of writing 2xy, I'm going to write 2x3. So let's write um, x squared plus 2 times x times y, or the 3. That's our, our second term. You can just think of it in ter instead of x and y, I like to say first and second term. And then plus 3 squared. And then, of course, you can simplify that as x squared plus 6x plus 9. And you'd get the same thing if you foiled, and that's fine. And uh, on the second one, you get x minus 3 times the quantity x minus 3. And that can be rewritten as x minus 3 quantity squared. So you recognize that as a special product. So you've got this x minus y quantity squared. I, I personally like to only memorize one, uh, one of these special products, this x plus y quantity squared among these two, because x minus 3 is really the same as saying x plus negative 3. But people, different people remember things differently, so if you like to remember both of them, if that's easier for you, then that's great. So we've got x squared minus 2xy is the way this works, uh, plus y squared. And the reason it's plus y squared is because when you get down to the bottom here, or to the end, and you multiply the negative times the negative, you'll end up with a, a positive. Uh, the, the negative 2xy sticks around because you're adding. Let's just run through real quickly. Uh, foil on this, you would have x squared minus minus 3x minus 3x because of the x times x and x times negative 3 and then negative 3 times x. And then negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So it follows really the same pattern as the problem we just saw but we've got a, a minus inside on that second term. So you can, t memorizing these to, for multiplication is, is okay, it works, it's great. I like to just FOIL, but what's really nice is to memorize them for factoring. That's, that's really when you want to be able to recognize these patterns, that is when the first term is squared and the, si and the last term is squared on a trinomial, then you know it's going to factor as one of these one of these two forms, either the x plus y quantity squared or x minus y quantity squared, and you'll know that by uh, determined by what what is right here. It's the middle term is is either plus or minus, and we of course we also have to look for not just the the first and last term being squared, but also the middle term has to be uh, that coefficient has to be two times the square root of the last term. So we've got two times three. Uh, it has, more specifically, it has to be two times the square root of the first term times the square root of the uh, second of the last term. Okay, so so really the the um, 
the reason you want to memorize these special products is for the factoring. Now this special product, x plus 3 times x minus 3, it does make it a lot faster to memorize that special product when, uh, when you're multiplying. This is the product of a sum and a difference. So if we were to go ahead and multiply, this would be x squared, and then x times negative 3 is minus 3x, and then 3 times x is positive 3x, and then 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So after you do a, a couple of these, you'll start to recognize the pattern that, hey, that, that middle term, or that x term, is going to drop out. The x squared term sticks around, but that, that middle term drops out. And so you start to recognize this. When two factors look the same, look very similar, except one is plus and one is minus, one is a sum and one is a difference, then you get this difference of squares, is what this is called. Difference of squares. And I'm going to show this one just a little bit differently, just because this is really great to memorize when you are factoring because it if you don't have this one memorized it sometimes it, it'll trip you up a little bit it doesn't have to I don't want to freak you out but uh, but it's very nice to have this memorized so if you, if you have this X minus Y again this is just the pattern X ah let's back up that's X squared if you have this pattern of X squared minus Y squared so in the math world, we're not real creative. We call it a difference of squares. It's, it's got uh, two squares, and it's a difference of those two. Then those are going to factor as x plus y. I should say that polynomial is going to factor as x plus y times the quantity x minus y. So that is really a good thing to have in your toolkit when you're factoring. So there's a little bit about special products.